this is the reality for us as African people okay I know that we have been on this planet for the longest and we have been all over the world okay but we need a coming together in our community and stop building everybody else's community, brothers and sisters, because we have been doing that for too long. We build up everybody else except us. We build the Chinese, we build the Japanese, we build the Indians, we build the Arabs, we build the whites, first of all. But we fail to build up each other. You see what I'm saying is, here is a brother. Brother Tim, he's got a wonderful place right here. Do we really patronize this brother and help this brother to grow? Because what we have, because you see, we are so we are very confused, my brothers and sisters. We are very confused. We, and that's the honest truth because of this culture that we have been brought up in. It's a culture of confusion. It's not a culture of truth. They don't live reality. Okay, their reality is, I don't, I, I, I can't even call it a reality because it's crazy. You see, and we buy into that reality, that so-called reality that is destroying us as a people. Look when, before integration, when our brothers were building, building communities, they were prospering. They weren't fighting each other. They weren't killing each other. The whites, they stood, stood aside and said, no, we can't let this happen. We're suffering. We are suffering. We don't have nothing. And, they, and look how they're growing. They have cars. They have businesses. They're building Wall Street. Uh, and we're standing here suffering. And they used to work for us. They used to be our slaves. No, we have to do something to get rid of them. And they start a war. That's when the war started. There has been a war ever since. And so when... What happened now? Remember, we had schools, we had all these different things happening. Now when the war starts, they decide we're going to integrate them and make them believe that we are going to make them feel welcome. But if they really mean it, why, why, why do they have to carry soldiers, our national guards, to make you go into a school? You see, we didn't learn anything. We didn't stand back and look at this thing and say, no, something is wrong with this. I'm not welcome here. You still couldn't go into a restaurant. Okay? But we had our own restaurants. We had our own school. So why did we want to go to their school? Why we feel that it was this great privilege? Because, my brothers and sisters, we have been sold something. And that thing was called Jesus. That's your savior. That's your everything. That's what's going to make it right for you. You will get yours when you go to heaven. Streets of gold and milk and honey and all these different things. That's what we've been sold. And if you're honest with yourself, you, 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 you believe, you see the reality. They will kill like thousands of us and we won't kill one of them. Because it's Jesus and God and the angels. You won't kill them. No matter what they do to you. So now, this is the point. We need to realize what we must do. And what we must do is to start building each other. It's critical, my brothers and sisters, that we build each other because we have been building everybody else up to this very point and there has been no return. Okay? There has been no return. No matter how much money... Think about this. Every day you take your money, you go down to this particular bank, and you put it there. And when you go back there, there is nothing in your account. Do you, see what I'm, do you see what's happening? We have a, a bank that we have been banking into from the day our ancestors has come on this land and there is no money there for you. Over 400 years, my brothers and sisters, there has, there, you go to, you imagine, you imagine the grief that you should be feeling and the anger that you should be, I'm not telling you to become angry. I'm telling you to look at the situation with an open eye. You see, so when, and we have brothers here, we, we're gonna talk to some of the brothers that we got here that is, you know, doing things right now because I think one of the problem is we like to talk, but we don't do. It's the reason why we're here today because we need to make moves, brothers and sisters. We need to do something. We can't wait forever. 
if we wait forever nothing happen you see how, how many years how, how long our, our, our four parents been waiting on Jesus has he come yet has he rescued them hasn't my brothers all of our problems that we face and deal with you are the solver of your own problem you must recognize that because the God is inside of you you have the ability it's there you just not awaken it because you don't know because the system has make you dumb down to the point of you don't knowing yourself even the very name that they give to you in this Western society is to keep you dumb because the name what is the purpose of the name that they give you you say I'm Mr. McMahon or Mr. Thompson where do you see that name in Africa no. Do you see any Africans with, with, with those names? No. And we never wonder why they give us those names. You see, we can't connect to our ancestors. They're making sure there's no connection. You're not plugged into the reality that you need to be plugged into. That's why you are behind all the time. And everybody else that you try to lift up, they come and they step right on top of you. Yeah. Everybody that you try to awake and try that they, they come and they say they realize that black people are very strong people both mentally physically and emotionally you are the strongest people on this planet and they realize that I can use these people to get where, where I'm going and they do it and we often support them because you are the most forgiving people you are the most loving people on this planet and they recognize that but you don't we don't because we think your enemy will never be in love with you. Your enemy will never help you. The, the thing that you're thinking that the enemy is helping you because he give you a job. Let me give you a, let me give you a situation. You work, okay? And all of us in here, I'm sure we have a job or we work for ourselves. At the end of the year, the government will say to you, oh, you make too much money. You have to pay me back some of what you, what you earn. Do you see the slavery that you're still in? Doesn't matter how high your income is. When the government look and even if you own a business, uh, well, you know, you gotta pay me back thirty thousand dollars this year. <laughs> you see this? You, you see the trick? Uh -huh. Oh, you live in this house? Well, you gotta pay a little bit more taxes on there. But dear people, they give them a loophole, my brothers and sisters. I'm going to tell you an experience. I have a customer. And I was working with this customer and they, a, a storm came through and blow down. You know, we were going to renovate our pool and, and um, you know, do some uh, stonework for her on the pool. Renovate the stonework because it was there already. Okay. The tree came down and tore down the whole screen enclosure. Messed up all the stonework, okay? Now, when the, when the insurance guy came, okay, to look at things for her, this guy told, just he's showing her how to get around the system because it's somebody that looks just like her. Mm. He's showing her how not to pay any money out of her pocket to get her stuff fixed. Bad. Who do you have do that for you? Do you have a community that supports you that way? You see what I'm talking about? You think that they're gonna come to your house? Doesn't matter with neighbor, if you live in one of their neighbors, do you think that they're gonna come to your house and give you that information? Okay. You see the reality? I know an our guy. Before the recession, he told me, he said, listen, he said, Keston, I was, I only have about $20 in my account. He had a business and he lose everything. And he said, okay, I went to the bank. Right after the recession, I told him, I need $20 million to go. He, I mean, this is a guy that filed, he filed for bankruptcy. And after the recession, he go and get $20 million and start back up his business again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm because of his name and his color. We have to realize that reality. They're not gonna do that for you. If they make one of us rise up, is to make the others believe that you're gonna get there. And every time the carrots get, get a little bit higher. Okay? Oh yeah, you know, you can do it, Tom, do it. Uh, Jane did it. You can do it. My brothers and sisters, we need, to, we need to become awake. 
because it's not changing for us. We might wear better clothes, we might live in a nicer house, but how much of us live in that nice house and drive that nice car mm -hmm. and have an, a, a good income where you're not living from paycheck to paycheck? How much of us can say that? Do you realize that if we as a people were coming together into our community, do you realize how much better off we would be? Do you realize how much more educated you would be if you know your history? If your children know their history? You see, imagine where we would be as a people. Do you realize that the cell phone that you're walking around with was created by one of your brother? Do you realize that? When I sit down and I listen to this brother, this brother saying, when I sat down around the table with these white guys and I'm telling them how this thing is going to work, they look at me like I'm stupid. Okay? See what I'm saying? You created everything. You built everything in this country. You need to know that. Without one of your sisters, you wouldn't have a washing machine in your house. You wouldn't have a refrigerator. You wouldn't have a oven. Recognize who did these things. It's not them. They stole your ideas and make it theirs. We have to come to the realization what has been done. So when a brother builds a business in, in, in a community like this, we need to support it. It's very, very essential that we do that. We got two brothers here that are writers. We need to find these brothers, their books, and we need to read them. Because they are telling us about our history and about what is really going on. We need to support them. We need, don't worry about they're going to get rich. Please, brothers and sisters, we got to put that out of our mind. Let them get rich. It's good for you. It's good for your community. As long as they're not carrying what they're taking to these community to give back the same people the money that you are running away from or that trying to destroy you. We have to start building our own community. It's essential, brothers and sisters, that we do that. You see, you, you got to realize the importance that your enemy will not be your friend. They are not going to all of a sudden one day wake up and say, yes, Jesus tell me to change. So, uh, you know, you see what I'm saying is, look at the whole paradigm of the situation. Look at the whole scope of the situation. And if you imagine that over what they have done to us, it, no, put yourself in their shoes. Put yourself in their shoes. If you had done the pillaging, the raping, the hangings, the beatings, the destroying of black people, okay? If you did that to them, do you, do you would sit in a position where you are governing and say that, yeah, I'm just going to give them power, man. I've, I've been abusing them for too long. Are, are, are you one day going to come to reality? No, think, think, we need to think. Are you going to just wake up one day and say, hey, here is power, govern over us. Do you, don't you think that they're going to have in the back of their mind that if we put these, if we allow these people to escape from under our roof, they're going to destroy us? Don't tell me that they're not thinking that way. That's why they keep you down. They don't keep nobody else down but you. They don't try to keep any other nation of people down except you. Those things transfer to your children. The bitterness, the anger. When we see each other sometimes, the way we look at each other, the way we deal with each other, mm -hmm. it is because of, of those things that has been put into our psyche, in our DNA. So we have to learn to get rid of them, the weight. But nobody help us. When did, they, tell me, I want, I mean, you guys can get involved, but you tell me, when did anybody from the side of the enslaver ever come to you and say, well, you know, I know you guys have a hard time. As Sister um, Joy de Graff put it a very nice way, in a wonderful way. She said, when has any of them ever come and say, you know, I know you guys have been through a lot. Let me, let me help you. 
let me give you some counseling you see what I'm saying when has that happened so how do you love me how do you say you know Jesus love me but who but how come you never help me you see how come you never helped me with this problem that I've been facing that you give to me I didn't take it up on myself but when did you ever help me to restore myself I see we're suffering from delusion we are suffering from delusion so we need to wake up and realize that we have been duped we have been bamboozled that's why we are in the condition that we are in we have to change the dynamics brothers and sisters it's very important and I don't want you know when I I try to when I address brothers I try to address my sisters at the same time because I'm gonna tell you why in the world of white supremacy women is not important we have to say that we have to realize those things you are not important if you go to church even in the Bible you are not important mm -hmm. if you are not married you are not important in the Bible it's very few women they put in the Bible and give them some kind of but women need to know their place that's what I didn't say that that's what the Bible talk about mm -hmm. a woman should never teach a man that's what the Bible say I didn't say that but who who make that rule <laughs> Did you see when God gave that person that information? <laughs> did, did, were you there? <laughs> really? How, how do you know that God is not a woman? How do you know that? Because somebody tell you so? Because a book says so? See, you see, you see, we don't question these things. It's like it's, you, you wouldn't even imagine that God could be a woman. See, because you, you, you You've been so bamboozled that you can't think that way. Most of us can't. Because we look down on women so much in this society that we can't see God in that. So who, who says so? Without women, where could we be? How would I born? How would any of us born? So why not God a woman? Because you come out of a woman, you were created inside of her. Tell me which man is which man that you know ever have a baby. <laughs> you know any? You see what I'm talking about? God is nurturing, just like the earth is a woman. You know that because everything you put into her it grows. It's alive. We're not on a dead planet, we're on a living planet. We need to realize that. So never make no mistake and think that if the hurt is so powerful that it gives us all we need and more. Every seed we put in there, it grows. Sometimes the seed don't grow because you have bad energy. It's not the hurt's fault. It's the energy that put that seed in there. Have you talked to the seed? Do you know that the seed is alive? You see? That seed is alive just like you. If it didn't, it couldn't grow. Everything is alive. But they tell you, oh, you know, a stone, you know, it vibrates. Life. So we are lack in knowledge of self, of the planet, of the creator. We are lack in knowledge. Okay? I tell people, I say, listen, when I look at heaven, I see all men there. If it's all men there, I don't want to be there because all the angels are men. <laughs> I never see a woman in heaven. And any portrayal of it is always a man. They have beard. God and Jesus is man. Jesus and 12 disciples, they're all men. Why do I want to be in that, in that situation? <laughs> So where no, you see, you see what I'm saying? Women are blocked out of the picture in this society completely. You are of you are null and void. We have to realize what has been done. 
You see, we have to go beneath the surface. You know, just like the movie The Matrix says, you have to take the red pill. If you want to know the truth, you must take the red pill. You must go down the rabbit hole. And the deeper you go down the rabbit hole, you'll be amazed what you uncover. Mm -hmm. You see, they don't want you to uncover the truth because anytime any one of us uncovers the truth and start to let others know, they're ready to destroy you. Our brother Malcolm X is the typical example. Okay? Marcus Garvey and all these brothers. They're a typical example. Anytime you see someone start stand up for black people, they're ready to destroy you. But you can't be afraid of that. Because there's no such thing as death, and you need to know that. You have to keep that in the forefront that you cannot destroy life. No one has told you that. The church will never tell you that. The school will never teach you that. They will not do that. Why would they want you to know that? They want you to remain in this enslaved position. And so that's why I'm saying now, we have to come together as a community. When we come together as a community, you can teach your children. You can give them books that they can see people who look like them in the books. When your children watch something, they should be seeing people who look like them. Make them feel better about themselves. Give them that good energy to make them become awake and realize they are, they are important. A community is where all of us come together and we know each other and we help each other without even thinking about gaining anything back from each other that's right that's what a community is you see what i'm saying when i help brother if i come here and i support brother tim i don't expect that this brother is gonna no this brother is gonna help somebody else okay when i support this brother by buying his book Dwayne. He's going to help somebody else. Same thing, what's your name again, my brother? Raymond. Raymond. Same thing with Raymond. When I buy Raymond's book, Raymond is going to help somebody. I'm not worried about it. I've done my part. You see what I'm saying? That's what we do. When we know a sister have a store, you know, a bookstore, a clothing store, whatever it is, we need to support that. We need to look, we need to go out of a way to look for those things and support them because if we always we support the Chinese when you go into the Chinese stores you see black people mm -hmm. buying up everything mm. a brother come down the street and he's got a little you know got a truck he got some things from the from a, you know a local farm he's selling some some stuff oh we pass him by you know because we're going down to Publix we're going down to here to get some fruits and vegetables why not buy it from the brother why not you see, we have to stop thinking that this person is going to get ahead of you. That's, that's one of our problems. Because if we see a brother drive a nice vehicle, sometimes we think, we, a lot of us, unfortunately, think, why are we selling drugs? <laughs> because if he's not a basketball player, football player, or something of the sort, or selling drugs, he, he don't supposed to be able to drive in the car. Because it's a stereotype that they tell you. And this brother may be the hardest working brother you ever know. Or this sister may be the hardest working sister you ever know. So we have to stop stereotype each other. That's what white supremacy teaches us to do. We have to get away from that. We have to support each other. We have to develop a code where we look after each other. Look after each other's interests. That's the reality. We must look after each other's interests. You see. You know, I'm, I'm going to let you guys, I mean, come in, you know, Feel free to um, to say something. Um, I know I have um, Papa here. You know, a very interesting elder in our community. I um, I had some very good conversation. A good conversation with him. He was here the other day, and um, you know, he had a wealth of information, really, on a, on a lot of these um, you know system in Africa and how it works. And so we want to have some dialogue. We want to. We want. We want the brothers with their business to talk about their business. You know, tell us basically how we can get you know to them, and how we can. Um, and as I said, with last time we were here, um, we talk about getting information that all of black-owned businesses that you know should get that information. All of us should have that information, 
that we can pass it around and help the business to grow in that way. And so what it will do, it will encourage brothers and sisters who are building up their business, you see what I'm saying, to grow, to put more effort. Announce the vendor. Huh? Just announce the vendor way. Oh yeah, and um, we have our um, our sister here. She's got um, um, quite a few stuff there. Um, maybe you can come, my sister, and tell us exactly what you got. She's got juices and all these different things over there. She can um, kind of enlighten us a little bit. And yeah. Um, I have chakra juice there, strawberry ginger, um, pineapple ginger or uh, turmeric, pineapple turmeric ginger, and beet juice uh, with passion. Um, I make it myself, they fresh pressed. Um, I also have on the menu white rice, brown rice, red peas. Uh, I have something that I call finger licking. It's actually a calabash stew with um, pumpkin, chayote, or chocho, whatever you want to call it, and some other good vegetables. Really good and um, baked chicken for whoever likes chicken. It's, everything is fresh made by me, all right? So when you get hungry, feel potato free to- salad. Oh, potato salad, thank you. <laughs> and if anybody is like into vegan potato salad or whatever, I don't like eggs in it, it's really good, um, the products I use without the animals crying. I eat chicken, but whoever doesn't, I got something for everybody, okay? <laughs> Oh, sorry. Um, Ten dollars a plate, and two dollars for a side of potato salad. If you want. Okay. Four dollars for the juices, uh, the ginger, strawberry ginger, and the pineapple turmeric, and five for the beet juice. All right. Okay. So let me know. Thank you, my sister. Yeah. So maybe I um I could get um you know Papa to introduce himself and and talk to us a little bit, you know. Um, he has come a good little ways, um, my brothers and sisters, so let's, um, you know, give a, a round of applause for Papa because I um, truly appreciate he has his life um, driving down to grace us with your presence. Excuse me, may I introduce him? Sure. Come on up, my sister. Please forgive me and allow me to do it from here. Yes. We do greet you all from the mighty or the mightiest homeland of Africa. Wow. Known by many names does not matter. We know where home is, not only for ourselves, but for everybody else. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to make sure that I properly introduced this young man I've known him for a long time. He spent many, many hours researching, digging, looking. I feel over in the bed that he's still not there. But he knows what has been ordained for him to do in his lifetime. And he has been about doing that. He hails from La Accra, Ghana, Labadi. When you get off the airplane, you're pretty much close to Labadi. And so you would ask anybody where the Sowa, Sowa, S-O-W-A, compound is, and they would take care of you. This is Ni Sowa La. The La is for Labadi. And he hails from the royal house of Odoi Achim in Accra. So without further ado, get your questions ready. I don't think there are any questions that he may not be able to address something about it. And you can later call him and get the rest of the information. But without further ado, please receive and greet Ni, which is Prince, Thank you very much. If you could stand here, brother. Um, Thank you so much. For actually having the kind of respect uh, 
not for me, but for the ancestors and for the black man to listen to a brother like me. Um, thank God that we are here today as Africans. I'm a Ghanaian African. Somebody is a Nigerian African. Somebody is a Caribbean African. Somebody is African American. Somebody is Jamaican African. Wherever you are, Africa is there. And uh, now we are spread all over the world. Not because a wind blew. And all of a sudden, we didn't know what happened. And by the time we landed, we landed at a place we don't know. Some of us are here deliberately. Nobody brought us here. Yes. We were traveling. Yes. We were trading. We were working. We were, we, we, we were just journeying to see what is out there. If you saw a people riding in a canoe, those people are scientific people. Let's ask yourself, what kind of crazy talk this uh, middle-aged man is talking about? <laughs> After all, eh, they are not sheep. They are not kind of submarines that you are talking about. But how can I sit down and I say, if I dug out a wood, and in a certain way, you can sit here, I can sit there, and we can travel from another side of the water to another side of the water. And we know, they know how the water circles round. Mm. So they know where to push the, the canoe inside and sit down. And they know where to fly the sail when they are going. When it's not okay, they know how to bring it down and keep on paddling, and keep on paddling. Now, uh, I didn't know scientists, yes they are, maybe, uh, uh, you, you, might, you might question, but they are not mentioned on buttons. Wait, wait. They, they are mental, they are, they are, they are, they, uh, they are mentioned, they are mental what? Buttons. They are got them there. Now, after all, what is the definition for science? It came from a, a Latin word in the middle. It says, skio, ski, skitum, knowledge. Finish. So they had that knowledge. And whatever they have today, it is what somebody has still stole, stolen from the side and have added, and they are still using it. Now, now I say this to say that the African woman is great. I say this to say that the African man is great. I say this to say that the African farmer knows when to sow, what to sow, and how to treat it, and when you eat the African, real African farmer's food, your blood pressure has its level. When you go to bed, you sleep the way you are supposed to uh, sleep. And all your veins will not be running things instead of becoming flexible. All because they know what amount of the chemical in nature. What chemical do they use? The cow droppings. What chemical do they use? When they, they, they sow the, uh, uh, um, the, um, the corn, they know when to cut it and spread it all over the place, wait at a time, set fire to it, and to build all over the place. They will leave it until the grass grows again. Before they come, I, I'm telling you what my father did. Then they set fire to it and burn it all over again. Then they come back. They don't have the tractor, but do you, do you know what they do? Like we said, the susu. Where I bring a, a dollar, you bring a dollar, you bring a dollar, you bring a dollar, we bring a dollar, and we know you have a baby. So we give it to you, no problem. You give it to the baby, you do everything, and you make your market grow big. Now, you see how we be helping ourselves. Now, I still use the susu to paint Dick's picture. I'll call on you, I will wait for you, we go and 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 wait for you. Let's say about 20. So now when I burn my place and it's okay now, then I call all these brothers. So then we line up like this. 
Sisimbom, ta bom bom, sisimbom, ta bom bom, ia ia ziwaya, ah, ia ia ziwaya, ah, parini kwa ta bom fan kwa netio, sisimbom, ta bom bom, sis. So they are winning, but they are winning with what? Joy. Women are winning, but they are winning with what? Joy. No problem. And by the time you see they've with it way back and so tractor or no tractor the tractor is there and they've been uh, uh, using it so this is when they after that they come back sometimes again with the cow manure and the manure the place and i tell you when you see a corn standing the kind of babies behind the a corn stalk you like it and all those corn stalks you know they are women you know how we call the earth we call the earth one afia afia is a saturday bone girl or ya asasia or that's a thursday bone girl so they don't have uh, 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 the earth as being male so what now we we hear today that is a uh, uh, mother earth mother earth started from you now later on when we were doing that so oh your people you worship the earth huh so today to you too you worship in the earth isn't it so who is voodoo this is what i want to talk about voodoo we all know when they say voodoo what do you think about when they say voodoo Negative. yes juju yes you are devilish yes you are witchcraft yes now what you have have no scientific basis yes yeah. now you know the meaning of voodoo is very beautiful v means spirit do means kingdom means country means the world means the universe and this do came from the v which means the the, the universe came from this very unseen spirit yeah, why? Because it was your daddy, it was your daddy's daddy, daddy's daddy's daddy from Africa. So that is voodoo, it's not wise. But now they turn it uh, in the beginning, and there was this and that, there was the Almighty. That Almighty they are talking about is the V, the spirit, the do. That in God created the universe, that is the do that they are talking about. And when we talk about the universe, it does not necessarily mean the earth. It means about what you don't see, what you will never see, unknown and unknowable. There's a uh, 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 the kind of do or the universe they are talking about. And so now when you hear voodoo, voodoo is voodoo, is voodoo. And this uh, uh, vo in another uh, uh, what not to means that which makes you free. You are your spirit which can break chains and you go wherever you want to go and come whenever you want to come. This is the meaning of voodoo, voodoo, voodoo. But our brains have been recreated in a way that the very moment you hear of this word or you see it written at a certain place, all you have is now nah, there they come again these africans they know nothing only about gods god what oh, man now we know there is god and we know there are gods what they call gods we don't call them gods we call them servants we call them messengers and we have different names for them in africa in our language so now now you tell me I worship other gods. Now, wait, the reason why we are talking about restoration, I'm, I'm talking about this. I want to restore our way of thinking in a way that when we get out tomorrow, you have your own picture about the world in your own African way. That we get to the world and not what now they twisted to suit their own palette. So now uh, this do 
do, do, and all that they are saying it is just to paint you negatively. Mm. Now, uh, for instance, uh, with the Akans in Ghana, that you, they, they call the Almighty God Nana Nyami. Nana Nyami. Now, what is the meaning of Nana? Nana means queen. It stands for what? King. It stands for a big person. So when you talk about Nana, you are not only talking about a male, you are not talking only about a female, but you are talking both about male, female. Nana, Nyami. Now they have angels. They have different names for what? The angels. So when you're here, you say, oh, a guardian angel. God, now you believe in the guardian angel. But the African believe in many gods. How come that? So now when you look at this way and you say, oh, so many gods, so many gods. Now today, what is the, uh, to, what's the name of today? Saturday. Agnus Dei Quitolis Pecata Mundi I have now turned myself into a pope. Now I'm speaking a little bit Latin about from the uh, Catholic Church. Dei means Deus Dei Dea. It means God. So every day is the name of what? God. So when you say Man de, 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 Deus Dei, Man Dei what? Man God. Tuesday, Tuesday God. Wednesday, Wednesday God. Thursday, Thursday God. Friday E, Friday God. Saturday E, Sat, and they have all. So the seven gods. Now, where, um, uh, 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 where in Ghana? Let me be specific here now. Every Friday, like yesterday, was a holiday in Ola. Now Friday is a day where you have to take it very holy. Now that's a day of reckoning. That's a day of judgment. That where you have to sit by yourself, don't lie to yourself. You this boy that you know when I tell you to go to school, you go and sit under the mango tree and eat as many mangoes you like, Ooh. then you go around and come back. <laughs> now, when your teacher gives you the uh, uh, lesson to go and study, do you study it? You don't study it very well. Now when it's about time, then you, uh, you, you, you put paper in your pocket. When teacher is not looking around, then you are copying. Now, you see all these kind of things. Now when people come, you look at them and you whisper into their uh -huh. ear. And you laugh. And you, 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 you scream like this. When they ask you a question, they start playing guitar by the side of your head. <laughs> Did they teach you how to play guitar? Or they gave you a book to learn? I say all these things to say that. Now that day is the day when you are facing the judgment seat your day angel is there with you. Your mother's angel is there with you. Your father's angel is there with you. You have a clan and the, what we call archangel. The family big clan has an angel. Talking about Ghana. Now, so that angel is there. And now, the day that you were born, you were outward on the seventh day. So if you were born on Wednesday, you stay in the room Wednesday until they count again. And you'll be in the room for seven days. That Wednesday, that's the day that you come out. So when this day comes, and they'll bring you out, give you your family name from your father's side, those with their uh, maternal, we do so. Now, from the father's side, they give you the name of your angel. So now they, uh, they ask you, I know Timmy said that so. Uh, minute your form of being. What 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 is the day you were born? So I was born on Monday. Oh, you are Joe Joe. Oh, you are Joe. And that Joe does not mean because of my you are there's a connection between you and your unseen spiritual being that controls you. This is the reason why you have conscience in you. When you are moving around, uh -uh. have you ever felt bad about something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now now know that you are that clever. So you know everything because you have a spirit within you that controls you, remote control. And mm. then it's within you. This is the reason why these people look at it. These black people, the brother will say, uh uh, we got to do something. If we are going to allow these guys to be around this like this, 
the thing they will do to us will never uh, 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 be in life to uh, tell our story. Let us do something to them. Now, then these people uh, came and all these kind of things. So today, the beautiful things, now when you go to church, have they ever spent time explaining this God and God to you in this way? No, absolutely not. And on Fridays like this, we, every Friday, here in America, we dress white. Back home, the high priest dress white. You have a problem, you take it to the high priest. And now you're the high priest. You are not a paid attorney. Where you are going to lie. So when there is a case between you and I, you and him, they will settle the case all around the world. The last person will be the high priest. Mm. You will sit down and settle the case. But why are you talking about when they are talking about restoration? Yes, I'm talking about this because it has been this very culture that when we talk about culture, then they take to mean Islam. When we talk about culture, they take it to mean Christianity. When we talk about culture, they may take it to mean Catholicism. They know what we mean. We're talking about our lifestyle and how we want to get our mental uh, uh, faculty work the way with our mind, with our spirit, with our body, with our brothers and sisters, and nature around us. So we are not uh, 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 an island in itself. So now, this is the reason why. So we are not that kind of people uh, who worship anything. We are brothers and sisters, what? United. So now, when we are talking like this, we, um, I'm saying this to say that I want us to have an idea about how to see us as a people. We must know our history. And so when we know our history, we must know who we are physically. If we know who we are physically, now mentally, what are we thinking about? Do we believe in a power that is behind this power that's talking? Yes, there is a power. This behind this very short power standing here talking. Brothers and sisters, now it's in you. 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 And so that makes it in every African here very great. But they will tell you, oh, you are worshipping other gods. No, you have never worshipped other gods because you know the name of God in God is what. And so we are called Wok Jaloy, which means uh, the uh, Wok in ancient Egyptian language means one. Wok means one, right? -o, and two means Senu. Three means Hermet. Four means Fudu, Futu. In Ahosa, you had a Fudu, Gurabu, Uku, Fudu, Fuda, that kind of thing. And five, two. So now, Wok. It means the only power that came on its own and created the universe. And within that one power, everything in the world came out of it. That power has no demarcation with any power on earth except that power. So now this is the God that we follow. How can somebody come and say, uh, you worship other gods? I'm saying all these things. To say that the very moment we see our brothers from the continent and we are together, they say, oh no, what these brothers again? They don't know Christ. They don't know Muhammad. But before Muhammad, there was already the God I'm talking about. You hear the Muhammadan say, la ilaha illahu. There is no other God. What? Thank God. And that's the, what we are talking about. And the uh, appellation for that God or the title for that God is called Wok. Uh, it's called Wok. And you know the name of that unseen God they are talking about. That God is called Amin. This is what you see in uh, Islam. Uh, when they pray, they say Amin, Amin, Amin. And when you go to church and they pray, they say what? Amen, Amen, Amen. 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 The original word for the, uh, the title for that very unseen power is what they call war. So the moment you say Amen, 
Amen. You are talking about that war. war. And the brother was saying something. In Africa, for instance, in Nigeria, go and play your fool, but not with women. They will slap you with cutlass and get your ear away from that place. Not with women. If you are strong enough, go and fight your, your, your fellow man. You see, all these things we are talking, women, why do I, I, all of a sudden then you branch off to other place like this, you are talking about army. But I want us to have a, an idea about what the brother said. I was watching it, listening to it closely. Now when you go to church, when you say, praise the Lord, you say, amen. Now, now, uh, all the men, when I say praise the Lord, say amen or amen. And all the women, when I say praise the Lord, say amen it. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Amen it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now you the men say amen and let the women say amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You the women, the male, the female part of this of creative energy called God is amen. And the male part is what? Amen. Now but they 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 painted everything out and they are pushing women. Is there a child here? Women are sweet in every way. <laughs> you may you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Sometimes when you walk like this, and we sit back. We, we, we're just like, we, oh man, is this for me? Oh God. <laughs> so I say this not just to make you feel good, but I want you to know that every day too, when I am called uh, uh, Kojo, that's my day angel name in the form of a male. Mm. And you have another name for the female angel. So each day is male, female. Why are they kicking you out of the, uh, uh, the very natural pairing that the God creator made for us? Brothers and sisters, now, uh, I don't want to talk for too long, but I just want to create the idea that when we are talking about our culture and not about church and religion, I don't care what you believe, I'm telling you what we know, our well view of whatever it is. You can go to your church, but I'm telling you, we gave amen to them. Jehovah, we gave it to them. Christ, we gave it to them. Okay, let, 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 let me uh, remind me, I'll say, I'll say something about uh, uh, and you, the Lamb of God, we take us away the sin of the world. Mm -hmm. Now, Christ. Christ, I'm not going to talk about religion. Christ is a name, it's a term for a person who is real deep into spiritual knowledge. It's made of two words. It means ker. K H E R. Bam. And S H T shit or shita, kreshit, 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 which means that which is hidden. That which is hidden, and they have the power to dig deep, deep, and find out yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And so now they have seven classes of, or certain amount of classes of spiritualists back home by the two Niles which has become one Nile. When I say two Niles, we are the white Nile, and we have the blue Nile. So the white Nile plus the blue Nile give us the whole, whole Nile. That's it. Now, so now, by the, they, they come and they know what to do, when to do it, and how uh, to do it. These people then were called Christ. We have uh, Christ or Christ. And the, the big boss, the Obo, the Obo man, the, uh, the boss man, is so created. For that created, there was an instant in ancient Egypt when uh, uh, somebody was so angry that, you know, the big cows, when you are passing by, you see them on the farms and so on and so forth, he went and cut the head of that cow. Mm -hmm. uh, trouble, trouble, when they bring it to the creator. Man, what is the trouble? You people have been causing trouble and so on and so forth. Look at it, and threw the head of the that very big cow onto the cow. The head took form, and the veins joined, and the cow got up and started walking. The problem was 
solved. So when you look at all these things, it's how people knew what they were doing. And so I'm saying this, this is where we got the name Christ from. And they are there to help the community, not in a church. Please. So I'm not talking about degrading who, where you go to church, and now they've gathered here, and what they talk about is talk about Christianity and talk down Islam and other things, and they are so eloquent and they are walking over your belief. I don't talk about belief. When you talk uh, to an African, especially in Ghana, from our place, we don't have faith in God. We know that there is God. Right. I, we, when, uh, uh, team, when you want to, you know, when you want to make too much trouble, we show you that there is God. <laughs> know that we have faith that there is God. We show you that there is God. So we don't have faith. Man, what, do I, what, what again do I need to have faith? Where my people, when it is not raining, they will come to all of you. Oh, give me a cent, 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 cent. They'll go and buy gold and have a, 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 a water and pour libation and call that we want the rain to come now. You don't have to be Elijah. You don't have to be a pope. You have to have communal spirit and a leader who knows what he's doing in the real world we fall. Now, brothers and sisters, now I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about restoring our way of uh, thinking, yeah. how we see ourselves, how you see yourself. Now, when you sit down there, if a day is both male and female, and you share a name of an angel, stop, that angel is in what? You. It's in you. That angel is you. So what, what you say, what you think, what you tell people, what you tell yourself, and you know that the day you were born, you have to come to sit down and commune with yourself and say that, oh no, I know uh, what how I talked to the sister yesterday, it was bad. Uh, I didn't do well, and my, uh, my mother gave me the money to go and trade. Uh, I went and bought chewing gum, I went and bought, uh, bought uh, ice cream, I went and bought this and sat down behind the house and ate everything and came and told mama that the money had been stolen. But in other fact, it ain't good. Now when I was looking for uh, some money, later on when she was not there, I look left, I look right, I look back, I look in front, and while she was talking to me, I was digging into her purse and I took the money. Now, after all these things, you take to yourself and talk to yourself that it's not good. That's your personal work, Sabbath. It's not about church. You are pressing our word. That's the reason on that day you were white. Which means transparency. You don't have to somebody come and tell you in the name of Christ. Yeah, in the name of, when you talk, I told you the meaning of Christ. And they didn't come from Roman Catholic time. They, no, not from the Greeks. That's a, a, a part of our built up in a community. You have those people who can see in the air. You have people who can dig into the sea, into the river. You have people who can dig into the ground. You have people who can pick earth and all these things. When, when you are doing this, you just don't go and fake it. But you have to know. So this division of what? Labor. Brothers and sisters, why am I talking about this? I'm talking about this because we have to have to straight picture or the great picture about ourselves and the wrong information that we've been fed before we were born. During when we were born, and even today, every day, we are being chased with that same false information about us. Have the true picture of yourself. Now, I'm coming to uh, the Lamb of God. Uh, all my life, I've been having research going up and down, trying to look at our culture, our people, and the way we believe what we believe and our brothers who are making money off of this uh, thing that is going on about our mentality right and all of a sudden I remember that I took one of my junior's brother's Catholic book that they've given to him in a primary school and I learned this Agnus Dei Quitolis Pecata Mundi the Lamb of God 
which taketh away the sins of the world, either pray for us or have mercy on earth. Now, so uh, the, in, in English, uh, the, the Lamb of God, Agnus Day, who is called Agnes here? Capital A G N E S. Agnus, the Lamb, the Agnes. Day, God. Quitolis, Fecata Mundi, the Lamb of God, who takes away the uh, sins of the world. Mundi. You, we all know the word Mundial or Mundane. That's worldly. Oh, that's mundane. That's mundane. The Latin they say Mapa Mundi. Mapa means ma. Mundi means the world. So the map of what? The world. So now, who is the Lord that takes away the sins of the world? The, in ancient Egypt, there was a guy or a god or a man or one day called Asa. Capital A S A R. With the Greeks called Osiris. 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 And this Asa has a brother called Seth or Setek. Now, this Setek uh, was, was so much envious, you know. So now we do it, especially when you put two girls or three girls in the room. If you want, if not, you, you, sometimes when the house is too cool, put three girls together. <laughs> you, you, you see what I'm talking about. Oh, they'll fly off their handling. Go where you want to do. Me, me. Everything under the sun, they will tell. But be very careful. Don't go closer. They are still together. So that was the, the thing between Asa and his brother, Setek. Uh, Setek. Uh, became so mad of his brother Asa that he killed him. Uh, when he killed him, he instead of you know throwing him away somewhere or burying him, uh, uh, he was so mad, mad that the the fire uh, uh, what now do you call it? The fire truck did cannot just extinguish the kind of madness burning out of that uh, uh, setek. So he cut the brother into, you can put it 14, you can be put it 16 or 18 pieces, and went through from the White Nile to the Blue Nile, all over Egypt, and burned the nose here, burned the mouth here, burned the throat here, burned the huge, he just uh, spent time, went all over the place, and burned everything little by little, everywhere, to make it difficult for the family to, uh, to gather the, the body. But then the mother wasn't aware, the mother wife wasn't aware, and was oh, this is what you, the, 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 the brother has a man, but then he was wearing locks. He cut one of the locks. So when you say locks, 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 this is where it started from. It didn't start from any Romans or any whatnot. This is how it started from. It shows <laughs> love, <laughs> right? And so now, uh, so what? And so he confronted the guy. What have you done? Ma, you know when we are mad, we are mad. Oh, you get a gun away from me. So, that boy, silly boy. Oh. So now he, he went around from one place to the other. From one place to the other. And uh, when he did the uh, out hand, he would bury love there. When he break the leg, he would bury love there. Wherever the anger took the boy to, and did that uh, treacherous thing, she uh, planted back love all over the place. And the man, uh, she got everything. But there was one thing still lacking, the mojo power. Who knows the, 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 the mojo power? That was lacking. Oh, who said it? Oh, I buy you a tolling car. Very good. <laughs> that, that thing, I like it, you like it. You like it, I like it. No, that's, that, that's what I'm doing. So they spoke against uh, lesbianism. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about any law. I'm telling you about our culture. Now, when you are there, and uh, there's this mojo power, it's not beside you. Sometimes let it just ring as a Oh, man. Oh, love, honey. Honey, do. I like it. Why did you do me so? It's good. You see, so now it brings humans to what? Together. The moment the mama put the mojo power at the place it's supposed to be and warm started growing 
through the what? The veins. Mm -hmm. And you, he was there the first day, the second day, the third day, and Asa was. Right, God got up. Hence, he is called Asa, the riser. Mm -hmm. So what we see now, death and resurrection didn't start from the Hebrews. This is where it started. And you know, before he rose up, there's 28 cornstalk that grew from the body. And that is what they call the bread of life. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so what we see, they say, no, 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 it's not about religion. I'm not talking to you about religion. Don't remember me as the person who came castigating about religion. Remember me as the person who told you about why we use corn as grit when we are coming from Africa. And it has been our culture. That's, it. That's where we get the, I'm the bread of life. I'm the bread of life. And it was by the side of a river. This is the reason somebody is saying, I'm the living waters. I'm the living waters. Within the corn, uh, uh, the corn is called ank. Ank means life. It means the rod, the staff of life. So you great, you great, you great, you great, you great, you great, you great. You, great. you, great. you, great. Oh, you are so great, but because we do not know who we are historically, this has made us to believe people we are supposed not to believe. And when they say look left, please look right. When they say look right, please look left. When they look back, say look forward. When they look forward, look back. When they say, hey, say that, I'm not, my name is not hey, I'm Tim Three Mask. I own this place. Talk with authority. Because you are somebody. Bushman. Number one. So now, here we are. So now when we talk about uh, 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 God and who you are and so on, this square the uh, bread of life came from. So I'm um, the living waters. Within the water, there is something called cre uh, germinative force, the unseen power. That I'm um, the living, and that water is what when you drink that quenches your thirst, but not the matter water. That's why somebody said I'm um, the bread of uh, the living waters. All belong to Asa, brothers and sisters. This is the history. I'm telling you history. Yes. Yes. I, I, I'm not a Roman Catholic. I'm an African. Mm -hmm. Now when you take me to Caribbeans and they are there, I'm a Caribbean. Mm -hmm. When you take me to Jamaica, I'm there, I'm a Jamaican. Why? Because I am black. Mm -hmm. And I'm beautiful. <laughs> and so now, we say all these things to say that when you say, Oh, Christ, 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 Christ. So, Asa was called the Christ. That's the thing. Asa was called the what? The Christ. So it wasn't Jesus, the Christ, that came and everything uh, started. So, when I say Agnus, Agnus, I said this to bring your mind to the Agnus, the Lamb. Do you know another name for Asa was the Lamb? I'm um, unfortunately I didn't bring a book for you. As a lamb, and that was in Mendes in ancient Egypt. Capital M E N D E S, Mendes in ancient Egypt. And all over the places, he was Anus Deis Pecata Mundi, and then Mendes. Been changed to Mundi in Latin, the universe. Then Egypt was the world power. Mm -hmm. okay. Now today, Mendes have been turned to Mundi. And now we follow. And when the Romans say, they are talking about you, they are talking about you, they are talking about you. And you, the Lamb Asar, the savior of the Egyptian world. Help us, pray for us. How? He is the bread of life. The 28 corn, stock of corn. Do you know how many um, uh, months do we have in uh, uh, the uh, year? 
<coughs> you may say 12. Yes, in ancient Egypt, Egypt we have 12. Uh, 12 months. And we have what? 13 months too. The 13 months is made of 28 days each. Especially Allah. We have the 13 uh, months uh, 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 lunar uh, calendar. And that represents the 28 constructs that grew what? From Asar. And so now, which means he is the daily keeper of your dining table. If really is a living water, he, whatever water, is, whether it's bottled or stoned or whatever it is, that's Asar that you are drinking. And whatever uh, uh, else they are talking about, that's Asa that they are talking about. So brothers and sisters, why am I talking about all these things? Because the point is, if you don't know who you are, especially if you don't know the actual history that belongs to you in truth, you know, uh, and your, your daddy we tell you, your mama, your grandma will tell you, if your grandma fails to tell you, who is going to tell you the story about yourself and your family? This is the reason why we are talking among ourselves. And I past the age where I have to talk about faith and condemning others. I don't care about what they say, but I care what we discuss among ourselves as a people. That's the spiritual truth. This is the reason we celebrate what we call homo work. At Gainesville. Homo work, do you know what we use? We use Asa. We use the corn. We use the millet. And we use the, the, the palm oil. That's it. And we display everything. And at the end of uh, we they, they, will, they will boil it, they will cook it, and they will share it among the people. Gates open, you eat, and there is a special day. Calling your was a day. The, 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 the day of longevity, Ngoa. Mm -hmm. The, the Ngoa day, that day, you wear white. Like the brother like this, like how he's wearing the uh, uh, white shirt, like, oh man, good. With your white cap, with your white shoes, with your white shirt, and we all come and sit down. That day, you see your food there, we cook, we eat, we do everything. But before we cook, eat, dress in white, the king, or the high priest, or the elder of the house, we take a seat. Yesterday I saw you fighting with your brother, or I fought with a boy in the town, or you were doing something very bad, so, 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 so forth. I, I learned you are not on talking terms with your mother. That thing is very bad. I learned you are doing this. Get away from where you're sitting down. Go and shake hands with your mother. Go and embrace that very brother. Go and so this is forgiveness that they are talking about. Mm -hmm. This is forgiveness. So now, well, after all these things, he or she, we pour libation. We pour libation and call the Almighty Creator. We pour libation and call all the archangels. We pour libation and call your dear angels. We pour libation and call all the powers that be that know about how you get me to the world. And for that house, that everything has been settled. So that day it is considered that the township is okay. This is African love that we are talking about. That people say one love, one love. That's the what that they are talking was a word that was borrowed from us. It came from the word W O R W A or W A WA. And do tracatre, and unus do tres catos, queen quit seven of ten when they came. And so all that work came from ourselves. One love, one love, and God, they call Nether, which means Nether, is called Wa. So when you say one love, we are talking first about one God. And that God is love. The love in ancient Egypt is called Meruti. Meruti. So it is not what you hear, God is love. No, 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 it didn't start from the Hebrews. That's where the whole thing started. So brothers and sisters, when you hear Anus, Dei, Quitolis, Pecata, Mondi, the Lamb, that is Asa, of God, Amen, who taketh away the sins of the world, like how Asa was killed, pray for the people of Mendes. 
that they didn't eat it. This is where the whole thing came, and the Romans took it. Now, Christians are using it, you see, in different languages. And when they say, we are now teaching you this, what about the one you plagiarized? That has been changed into what? All these things. Brothers, sisters, when you talk too much, it passes the ear. But when you talk up to a point, people get to understand you. I'm saying I don't have to talk the whole day. A person, we have a proverb, which says that the child that hears there's no need talking to him or her the whole day. A word or two is enough. So they say the word to the wise enough. May God Almighty bless you. May all the ancestors bless you. May all the archangels bless you. May all the plants on earth bless you. The waters that you drink should heal you. The air that you breathe to take care of you. Don't take what is not yours. Do what you are supposed to do. Don't yeah. do what, what you are not supposed to do. Yeah. Nobody says it is very easy. It is very hard. However, you got to try. Because all the boys and girls who try, try say I'll try, is always at the mountain top of the almighty yeah. creator. We therefore invite you to Homo Walk next time when we are having it against you. And come and see everything for yourself. God bless everything that you touch. If there is sickness anywhere around your body, it's going to be healed. Yeah. Thank you. This is this is what we truly really want. We want we want these elders in our midst to help us to grow. We have to appreciate this kind of brother in our life because this brother is really feeding us the missing link, the information. He, he, I just sit there and I was in awe. Okay, because I'm a student. That's what I'm saying. I'm a student. I love to listen to a brother like this because this brother here is really uplifting us. Not to cut you, but she's going to leave soon because she has to get yeah. back. I just want her to say something. Yes, I speak to my sister. To me. Just introduce yourself. You know that Good day, everyone. I am Sister Hope Rice. Uh, we're um, visiting today from Daytona Beach. So um, I brought my daughter, brought my other daughter, Nisha. <laughs> it's an honor not only for myself to be here, but it's more of an honor for my daughter to take the time out of her day yes. as well as Misha to be here so that we can understand that there is another way. It is more to what has been taught and indoctrinated to our people. And I just love the fact that it's so many looking around, not trying to put it out there, different generations that's here. And this is what it's about. The elders teaching the younger, the younger following the elder suit and we coming together as one and build so we can be of greatness again. Thank you for having me. I will be back. Brother Kirsten, it was a pleasure. Brother Lance, it's always a pleasure. Thank we you, will be back. Thank, Thank everyone you. for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I'll get that check okay. on you. Know, um, okay. Dwayne, would like you to kind of, uh, um, okay. one second. Are you going to be leaving my brother? Or you? Take okay. Okay. Take care. Um, you you want to come up here for a little bit and kind of tell us? What what you're doing as you guys and remember the sister got food so you guys can go and get something but tell us tell us basically a little bit about yourself what you what you're doing and how we can support you. All right, so my name is uh, Duin Wang Omwale. And the reason why I gave myself that name is as you talk about the restoration, part of the restoration is that we as African people have to reclaim our identity when they enslaved us, you know, they forced their language and their names on us for a particular reason. Because if I can rob you of your identity, your very sense of self, then you become whatever I tell you you are. So one of the things that they did was they took our name away and then they gave us their name and that was uh, their way of establishing dominance over us. So a lot of what I do is based on this idea of you know, restoration for us as African people and I'm an author, I've written uh, 17 books so far. And the reason you know, why I've been such a prolific writer is because as I start studying this history and I start looking at the things that they haven't told us, you know, when um, I remember, you know, growing up in school, the history books is always, you know, European people. You go to um, world history, world history is always, you know, European history. You go to science, 
science is always um, European scientists. Mathematics is always you know Greek uh, Greek math uh, ma mathematicians. They never show us what African people do in history. And I went to Catholic school, so you know it was even worse then because. God was white, Mary, you know, Jesus, the angels, everything in Catholic school was white. So I came from a very Eurocentric uh, experience. So as I started, um, you know, studying my history, and I realized, you know, I went through my entire uh, school experience all the way through high school. And I, I don't know anything about myself as an African person. I don't know anything about um, African history. So that was my motivation to start, you know, uh, reading and uh, researching African history. And the reason why I became an author is because as I'm reading this history. I'm seeing all the information they haven't uh, told us. And I became really um, determined to share the, his the history, and you know, one of the things I started doing was just writing books to get that information out there. Now, for anyone who's interested in um, pur purchasing those books, they're all available on Amazon. But that's you know, a little bit of you know, what I do and why I do it. And I think it's important important to um, explain the motivation behind doing it because, as I said, this is you know a serious uh, issue. It, or, um, our history really isn't taught in schools, and I actually had the experience of going back to one of the schools that I was uh, that I graduated from as a, as a substitute teacher, and I'm just you know dealing with the children there. You know, some of the stuff I hear from the black children is very uh, very heartbreaking. You know, one experience was um was uh, one of the students, the middle school students. He called me over and he asked me if he's considered uh, light skinned. So I, I put my arm next to his and I said, "You're darker than I am, and I'm not even you know light light skinned, but." You know, it, it shouldn't even be, it shouldn't cross the, uh, the, the mind of a black child to question, you know, what, what complexion am I? And now this is something I deal with on a regular experience when I'm dealing with children, you know. Uh, something else I notice is whenever two children have a disagreement, you know, something that comes up a lot is, you know, one child might, might tell another child about their skin, you know, their you know, complexion becomes an issue if you're too dark. I mean, I remember I hearing one girl t uh, tell one of the guys in class, you know, you're dark and ugly and that's why no girl wants you. So, I mean, like I said, these are middle school and elementary school children mm -hmm. that I'm dealing with, and I understand their experiences because, as I said, I went through the same school experience, so I understand that when you go to a school that's teaching you that you have no history, all the history is European history, you've never made any contributions to science, never, never made any contributions to math, and they're teaching you to pray to a white Jesus, mm -hmm. your conception is that whiteness is up here and whiteness is the standard. So you start thinking that, yeah, I'm, I'm black, I'm ugly, and then you start looking wrong and realizing, realizing I'm surrounded by other people that are black and ugly, and just, you know, it, it creates that division among us. So uh, what I'm also engaged in as well is bringing about that unity not only among African people here in this country, but I'm part of an organization called the Federation of African Liberation, where Pan-Africanist organization that seeks to unite African people around the world. So currently, we have membership not only here in the United States, we have membership throughout the Caribbean islands, membership on the African continent. And one of the projects that we're engaged in is um, we're working with uh, an organization in Tanzania. What we're trying to do is to set up um, a community in Tanzania for brothers and sisters in the diaspora that want to go back home. They can go back home and help to build up in Africa. So I think it's um, very important to recognize that as a people, we're, uh, the issues that we're dealing with are global issues, and this is why the organization that I'm part of is a global organization, because as many issues as we have here in the United States, you look around you know, throughout all the Caribbean islands, you see all of those same issues in those islands. You know, you look at uh, throughout the Afri African continent and you see all of the issues going on in the African continent. So what we, start, what we have to start recognizing is that not only are we one people, but we face the same struggle. And the only assistance that we're going to find in the struggle is each other. You know, Chinese are in Africa, but they're not coming to Africa to rescue African people. Europeans have been in Africa for centuries, and we know why they're there and what they're about. So as I said, the only people that are going to solve our issue are ourselves. We can't rely on anyone else. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, my brother. I mean, you see, you guys see what, what I'm talking about. It's, it's very, very important that we support these brothers, that they can continue to do the work. Because this work that this brother here is doing, it is the work to help us with this restoration. Just like we talk about our brother here, I mean, the information that we receive here today, my brothers and sisters, is something for you to really, or for us to really meditate on. It, you know what, I'm, I'm telling you, it's just something that really resonates. Because you know you need to hear this information. You know, I, I look at this brother here as my father, you know what I mean? That's someone that I can look up to. You know what I mean? Those are things that we should be 
what should be instructed to us from a long time ago. But it hasn't been because we were not living in the year or the time of the awakening. We are living in the time of awakening right now. We are not living in the time of having faith and all these different things I believe. We are in the time of knowing. Knowing. That's why we are coming together. See, we have another brother here. Raymond. Raymond is gonna, he's also a writer. And so he's gonna tell us about what he does. This is what I'm saying is, and, and let's say, you know, support these brothers. It's very essential. Get other brothers and sisters that are not here also to support them because they need to continue to do the work. Support the sister that is, you know, feeding us. You know, we have to do that, brothers and sisters, because if they grow, we're gonna grow. I would love to see the sister have a nice restaurant one day that we can go and sit down and buy together. Yeah. Yeah. Have bookstores where we can go and vibe together there, just like you know, Brother Tim have this place here. So you know, come on up, my brother, please, and tell us. Uh, mm -hmm. I remember the day I almost killed myself. I ran into my parents' house and instantly my dad knew something was wrong. After struggling to talk to my mother, my dad and I went into a deep conversation like we had never had before. After overcoming the last obstacle in my life, building a connection with my father, my eyes became wider than ever. I stopped walking around with my eyes wide shut. I started listening to every characteristic that anyone has ever said about me, whether they were positive or negative. I begin to see myself in the qualities that I have to save a nation. I begin to evolve into the man that I am intended to be and not the one the world wants me to be. They say that out of darkness comes light and my mission is to let this little light of mine shine. Thank you for giving me the vision that was needed to pursue my dream. I have experienced many ups and downs and have shown resilience to a world that has possibilities of promoting ugliness. Road to Oprah has taught me courage, commitment, patience, determination, and persistence. All the traits needed for me to become a positive role model to everyone worldwide. On this road, I have learned to love unconditionally and fulfill my civic duty of teaching my knowledge to every person that I come into contact with. Mm. A great journey begins with knowledge, 350 goals of a leader. A great journey begins with knowledge of one's destination. Every step taken towards the goals of your dreams requires sacrifice, suffering, and struggle. I must ad one must advance confidently in order to reach their highest potential, recognize one's gift, and fulfill the, the destiny that the Creator has designed. Every person's path is different. We all come into knowledge of self at different ages, but every person's journey should include questions such as, who am I? Why am I here? What is my purpose in life? 350 Goals of a Leader provides in-depth insight on the basic principles that every leader, entrepreneur, artist, or person should follow to unlock one's gift and ultimately fulfill their purpose. Legacies are created by individuals taking the first step. It requires the courage of ordinary people performing extraordinary feats. These are some of my books that I have written. Um, I quit my three jobs at home eight years ago and I travel promoting my books and putting on my short plays. And wherever I go, when I get to a new city, I hit and I have to hit hard and I have to talk to people and I have to promote because wherever I go, I have to leave a piece of myself behind for that community to grow. One of my books is called How to Write and Print Your Own Book for Under $300. This not only teaches a person a skill, but it also teaches them a trade. Because once, once a person learns the steps in here, they can open their own publishing company and publish other people's books. I tell uh, uh, parents that have kids or that work with a group of kids, have your kid write about 20 or 30 poems. Put it into a book about this size. 
with a price tag on the back of it. And now you take that kid to every barbershop and beauty salon and that 13, 14, 15 year old kid is now an author. You talk to enough people, someone's gonna say, hey, come speak to my class. Hey, come speak to this group of kids. They do one speaking engagement in front of one group of these people, they're now motivational speakers. That is what that do. Um, through their eyes, with every newspaper and news story that I've read or seen, I put myself in the victim's shoes and wrote their stories. The book has 45 short stories and they all have critical thinking questions at the end of every story. The name of the production that I put on is called Through Their Eyes, An Evening of Monologues, Music, and Art. And I've taken several other stories out of the book and put it on stage. There's a performer that performs during set change, and there's different artists that paint pictures that correlate with the stories. I say all to say that uh, there are 45 stories in here. I am the playwright. So once this gets into someone else's hands and they want to try their hand at directing, this is the book to turn them into a, to a director. They take it, they turn it, they twist, they chop it, they do it any way they want to do it. I just become the playwright in the background. Now you're a director. Now, hey, I have a production that goes towards kids. I have a production that goes towards adults that's suffering from any kind. I am the director, he is the playwright. You move forward, we move forward together. Blessings. Mm -hmm. you, you, you guys see what, I'm, what, what we're talking about mm -hmm. now? You see the vision? Really, I mean, we, we can speak, brothers and sisters. Do you guys see the vision that we're talking about? Do you see the foundation? The foundation is laid. The foundation is laid, my brothers and sisters. Do you see the vision now? Do you see the house coming together? Or do you see that it's impossible for the house to come together? Do everybody in here see the, see the possibilities? Yes. Raise your hand if you do. If you don't, then... The reality you, of it all. You know, you see the reality of it all? Right. My brothers and sisters, we have to make it come alive. Not out there. It starts here. We have to make this happen. Don't look anywhere else. Please stop looking for politics, politicians. Stop looking for all these different things. Look to you. Look within, find yourself. The foundation is laid. You are a mason, take up your trowel and start to lay individual blocks. Just like these brothers here. See what this brother just tell us? He's, tell us, he's telling us how to come on board. Do you want it better than that? Or do you want to go wait in line to go to Hollywood? <coughs> see what I, no, seriously, mm -hmm. think about it. You have the information. You have everything in front of you. Why, what are you afraid of? There's nothing to lose. You've been losing for 400 years. What do you have to lose? By getting up and trying. By getting up and look what within. My dear sister, please. Before you finish, when, when you're finished, sorry. Yeah. You could uh, announce the lady with the foundation. Um, uh, my dear sister, please come on up. Come on up here. I, I, I. Yes. Please. <laughs> what, what's your name again, sister? Erica. This is uh, Sister Erica. She has a foundation. I, 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 sorry, my dear sister. I, apologize. Is, I really just I, come I, to listen. No, but, but, <laughs> but we need you to put out what you're doing because we need to support this cause, my brothers and sisters. So please give your give our ear and attention to the sister and let she explain what she's doing to you guys. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Erica. And I do know what my name means. It is European and it's spelled with a K. So that changes the meaning. Erica with a C just is the feminine form of Eric. But Erica with a K means ever powerful. And my mother gave me that name at 16. So I don't think she knew what it meant, but that's what it happened. <laughs> um, and the reason that I'm here is that I am having a Wonder Underwear collection campaign, and it's for underwear for women who are in domestic violence shelters. My mom, who passed in June from ALS, um, she was 
She went through a training program that Orange County has to become advocates for victims of domestic violence. And one of the things that they do is they tour domestic violence shelters. And as they're taking you through the tour, and they have these bins where people donate stuff. And mm -hmm. all the little girls had tons of stuff, tons of panties and, and toys and things. Some for little boys, but there was absolutely nothing for the mothers. Mm -hmm. And when you think about what it takes to leave your home and to carry your children and to go into a shelter, you're not thinking about things that you need for yourself. Maybe you'll grab your driver's license, your wallet, your keys, and that's it. And we always grab stuff for our kids as moms. And so these women didn't have anything. So what she did at her job, she went and she bought some underwear. Her coworker said, hey, Michelle, what are you doing? She says, I'm buying underwear. So they kind of came and it was informal and she did it um, a couple of years. And that was just her thing that she did. I moved down from New York. I'm originally from New York City and came to Florida. I saw my mom December of 2015, June 2016, she couldn't walk. July, I took her to the hospital. She fell down. I couldn't get her off the floor. My mother was 5'11 and only 160 pounds. I couldn't get her off. She was in a wheelchair. And then by August 11th, I came back from the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville. She was diagnosed with ALS. Mm -hmm. And I say all of that to say we don't have as much time as we think. So we spent the latter, the latter half of 2016 just trying to get her together, get things in the house changed and before we could, by Thanksgiving of 2016, she was on a vent, which means she had a machine that breathed for her. I kept her home as long as possible. 2017, I said, Ma, I'm gonna do this for you. I'm a procrastinator by nature, I just am. <laughs> and I just didn't get around to it. I never thought I wouldn't have her. June of this year, she closed her eyes. So I said, this year, this October, I'm doing it for her. And the reason it was important to my mom, I told you my mom had me at 16, my father was 17. They broke up. You know, like it just didn't last and that's okay. But my mom dated a guy. She had a lot of boyfriends, not a whole lot, but enough. And she never was shamed, and I say that so it's not like shaming her. She dated this guy named Tony. And Tony was a man who, he was handsome and he was gregarious and he was all of these things. But I didn't live with my mom, I lived with my aunt. So I visited my mother. So this wasn't something I grew up with. So one day we were all gonna go to the zoo and I'm from New York City. So going to the zoo is a big deal, going from Brooklyn all the way up to the Bronx. I had a little brother that was four, my mom's best friend and her kids. And I don't know what Tony's particular issue was that day, but he came in the apartment and he was enraged. And he grabbed her by the arm and he dragged her in the bedroom. And they were shouting and I was used to shouting, but then I heard his flesh and hers. I heard my mother cry. I had never heard my mother cry. But I didn't grow up with her, I grew up with my aunt. So I grabbed the phone and I called my uncle. Tony came out the room and he's like, grab the phone for me and he's like, who are you calling? I said, I called my uncle because I had that bravado at nine years old. And my uncle drove all the way from Queens, which is where I live, to Brooklyn, which is about about yep. a 30 minute drive. Depending on where. Well, <laughs> He, we were, he, he drove about 30 minutes. He came through the door. You know, we had the buzzer man in the building. He came upstairs and he was angry. And Tony had already left. And he was enraged and he was like, Michelle, what is wrong with you? He said, pack her stuff. And he packed my stuff and he took me and he wouldn't take my brother because my mother wouldn't let him. So we drove all the way back to Queens. My aunt came home from work. She was a nurse. Now we jumped all the way back in the car and drove all the way back to um, Brooklyn because Tony was looking for an ass beating, but it never happened because he didn't come back while we were there. So she stayed with him another two, three months. And in this part of the story going, she's telling me now as an adult, because it's like he just disappeared. He stalked her. There were no stalking laws. My mother was a trader on Wall Street. He would come up to her job. She told security, don't let him in the building. There was nothing she could do to make him go away. And then she had a coworker who had a, a man in her life who was, a little used to confrontation, shall we say. And they caught up with him and they met him. And I don't know what happened to Tony, but you know, you know. he disappeared from that. <laughs> and my mother would go to work with bruises on her face, with black eyes, busted lips. And people would ask her, Michelle, what happened? She would say, hey, Tony hit me. So she didn't have the shame that goes along with domestic violence. And that's my point. A lot of these women do. I was in a room with seven women doing a photo shoot and all seven of us have personally experienced domestic violence. So it's, it's important, you know, and it's important that 
I give to these women who have nothing, you know, at all. And they've, they've moved into a situation where they're living in a room, they don't have a lock to their door, they have to figure out how to get their kids to school, you know, how to feed their children. You're now living in a community environment which some of them aren't used to. So if the least I can give is underwear, then that's why I do it, to follow my mother's footsteps. You know, I've had a blessed life in a lot of ways. So this is the least that I can do to give back. So it's just that one thing. That's it. You're not, you're not telling them what you need them to do. Oh, I, know, I need underwear. I'm sorry, we, I always got, forget to ask on the sales pitch. Thank you. I need new underwear. And I'm packages. New underwear. Um, Bras and panties, I tell women, buy the size that you wear. Um, it's not some mythical, you know, size two. And also underwear for little boys. Little boys don't seem to get as, as many things. Little girls get a lot, but it's the little boys and the women, bras and panties and socks. Yeah. Oh, can drop them here? You can drop them here. And then on November 3rd from 7 to 10, I'm having an event where I'm donating actually to Safe House of Seminole County because they're the ones that called me back and they're going to come and we're going to give them and Selena Sanchez who is my home girl, she's going to perform. I have um, Rose Monroe, she's a nurse. She also is a SANE nurse and a domestic violence nurse. She's going to speak. Um, you know, things like that. So. But those who are on the stream, who are out of the state, oh, I'm the on country. the video. Oh my goodness! Don't yeah, make it's all family. Nothing. They don't worry about that. Beautiful. But how could they donate from afar? Is there a place or? or um, and from, I mean, could they send it here? They can no send it here. Mask? It was something okay. honestly. I just got up and decided to do. So if you're far away, I would say as much as I would love a donation, do something in your community to impact okay. the people where you live. You know, the oh. one thing that you need. Okay. And um, we've got um, a couple other sisters that we're going to introduce. Um, <laughs> we we want to introduce, uh, what's your name again? Shandria. 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 And, and Sandria. Shandria. And then uh, we're going to have Shandria. Selena afterwards. Come on up, my dear Thanks. sister. Right. And uh, talk to us. Hello, everybody. Hi. I was, um, I don't know how to say, provoked to say something after him. The Crown Prince, yeah. Sowello. So well, I? So well. Okay, so well. Um, and also, I'm going to get a book from you before I leave. I'm just going to say that first. My son there, he is, you know, a special son. And he's been, you know, doing these picture books or whatever. You know, just lately he want to read me his picture stories and stuff. So that's very inspiring. My daughter, Veve, come here. When, when you started speaking, it made me think of some lot part of my life, you know, my birth. Um, I'm a twin, and I have that, um, I've had that relationship with the twins uh, that you spoke of, the, the two brothers um, right. fighting and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But you started speaking about the voodoo and the va. My life, for me, is like a mystic. I was born with this energy. I've always been afraid to call on Jesus. I have called on him, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I was brought up in church and stuff, but it never suited me internally. It's like I was doing wrong when I did, you know? And even after, I still kept doing it. But um, for the most part of my life, I realized I've been different. I've never been a fast girl, not innocent but fast and I've always wondered why I wasn't like my friends just different things the sister here you know I listened to her speak the other day I started thinking about the naming of the streets and stuff all of those things I'm interested in but when you started speaking about that faith um, every child that I've had I've <coughs> had some form of vision of them before I gave birth so you know my, my oldest son I dreamed I had a boy in the toilet I was born, he was born a, a boy, and he had a stool inside me before he came, so it was so significant. <laughs> but this daughter here, um, before she was born, I had a name for her. Her name is Veve Mahala Anje Hall. When I was pregnant with her, I had, before she was born, this, I'm gonna call it a vision, not quite a dream. I saw her coming with uh, she was like a head on top of a sun with so many sparkly, like this picture here, sparkles shooting from all out of it, just a, a, a head on top of it. 
And I woke up from that like, wow, it was so amazing for me, you know? And I said, please, let me see it again. And I went back to sleep and I saw the vision again. She is, you can see her. She is amazing. Since we've been here, you know, I don't know if it's an energy or vibe, but she draws like fast, quick, you know, anything she sees. So she's been drawing since we've been here. But Veve, the spirit, the symbol of the spirit, that's her name. You know, that's what I got from that. I, I don't know if, exactly what all the Mahala Anjay, except the Anjay is the angel mm -hmm. of my daughter, you know. Um, I don't, it, I'm saying this to say that this energies that you're speaking about, the ones with us, and I want to know more about it, so I'm going to come into your family because I have to learn yours too. You're going to have to teach me some things that are very important to me mm -hmm. because I feel like I have all of this knowledge. I don't know how to put it together, but it's what's going to make me be who I am fully, you know, because I can feel myself missing it. There's so much stuff there, and I don't know how to deal with it, to put it together, to make me grow to where I want to be. But I'm saying that to say that it's true. I fully accept it. There is someone with us, inside of us, behind us, on the side of us that has all of this knowledge, you know, and causes us to use it, you know, and pretty much that's it, you know, I just wanted to share, you know, this, I'm so thankful to be here today. I, 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 forgot, I, I forgot about even selling the food, if it doesn't sell, I'm going home to eat, but I'm full now, you know, because what I got, thank you, because I was supposed to go to work today. I was telling your sister when I when I when I was here Monday, you was like, Oh, I think it would benefit you so much, you should come out and stuff. I was like, Did he not hear me tell him I was going to work? <laughs> <laughs> but it was like he was already saying, I'll see you on Saturday, so I'm here, you know? Um, and I'm so glad that I'm here. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Right. May I just say this yes. before you leave? Yes. There is a spirit within us. Yes. It's Jesus. Ah, yes. But guess what? It's not called Jesus. Jesus can't be the spirit in you and Jesus is the spirit in me and the Jesus is the spirit in you. No, we each have our own deity that resides within us. And that's how Christianity, I'm a preacher, yeah, okay, ordained minister with the African Methodist Episcopal Church. But the thing of it is, I understand. And they wanted to trip us up, confuse us by saying all of us have Jesus within us. Yes, we do, but it's not called Jesus. I even accepted it as the Christos when you started talking about Exactly. It is the Christ. It's the part of the it's the part of the creator that is within all of us. And it's according to the day in which you were born that determines the name. And it's not just and I'm Jesus. I'm glad you brought it back because I want my information, okay? I'm coming, yeah, trust me, I'm not, you're not getting away without opening my book and, and helping me to understand these things about me and who I am. You know, I'm like so hungry for that. Mm -hmm. I've, I've um, called myself making a lifestyle change. And right now, I want the abundance the prosperity, the success for me, the who I am, you know, I'm ready to experience that. So thank you very much. Again, I just want to say, brothers and sisters, do you see how important community building is? Do you see, where, where else could you go and learn all this information to? Where, where else in Orlando, tell me, where else in Orlando could you go and get this wealth of information? about your history, about who you are, about why we need to do the things that we need, why we continue to, you see, you imagine that if we just come together and build up each other, you, you imagine how great this would be everywhere, not just here in Orlando, but right throughout this country, throughout the Caribbean, throughout Africa, do you guys realize that what this would do? It would completely set us free. Mm -hmm. Sister Selena. Uh, okay. Good. 
Um, I'm over here all teary eyed. You have to forgive me. I'm a bit of a crybaby. Um, cause on my way here today, I was I was telling myself like, oh my gosh, you have all these things lined up. You know, you you can't run from what it is you're supposed to do. You're doing it, but you know you ain't doing it. Like you're just doing enough stuff to keep from doing the stuff that you know you need to do. <laughs> but but you're still working. And then I come here and thank you, thank you. Thank you, uh, because there's some things I needed to hear that I walked in on and at a time when I needed to hear them, and I'm so grateful. Um, I was gonna just tell a little story real quick. Um, you know, we go to um, Albany, Albany or Albany, I'm not sure how you say it, but we go to Georgia during Albany. October. Albany. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's Albany, Albany, New York, I don't know, okay. We, <laughs> and when we go, um, for some reason, I'm just compelled to pull over and I pick cotton because they have the cotton fields. I had never really seen it, but I would go and I would pick cotton um, just just to go, just to kind of stand, just to be, just to, you know, because I know the story is so much greater than that, but I also know that whatever opportunity any of my ancestors has ever had to be with nature or to whatever, it, it was bigger than what is being told or what's being seen. I, I just always had this like peek behind the veil kind of thing just always wanting to look behind the curtain and see what's really happening but um i was blessed to go to new york i i love black genius i love the idea of 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 our ability to create our ability to just master so many things just um Nothing, learning and, and picking up things has never been hard. It just seems like I've been walking into everything that needed to be, like without asking or whatever, but I wanted to know who I am. And to know thyself, it seems like I went so deep inside myself that I ended up finding all of this love, like just, so anyway, with the story about the cotton, my friend and I went to New York, to, the, um, to Harlem. I was saying this. And the girl that we visited lived at 1492 Amsterdam. And I kept saying, 1492, what is, it's something about 1492, like why is that freaking me out? But anyway, we walked down to the Cotton Club and uh, we were gonna see another woman, Odetta, she was gonna do a tribute to Nina Simone. So my friend said, what are you gonna do when you get to the Cotton Club? What poems are you gonna do when you get in there? And I said, I ain't gonna do no poems, cause people, I, you know, they ain't gonna ask me to do no poems. So she said, don't say that. What are you gonna do when you get there? And I said, you know what? I wrote this poem about music, and I'm gonna do that. And then you know what? Depending on the crowd, I might do a little candy and stuff. So you know, so we laughed and everything. But we went early. We walked past. We stopped. Took pictures in front of the Cotton Club. Walked to the river, the Hudson River. We sat out there. I got to get lost in thought and travel. We went home, we come back. We got there early. So there were people there and they was walking up saying, we're so glad to meet you, we've been waiting on you. Like elders, you know, they were like 60, 70, 80 years old. And I said, oh girl, we came on. You know, I was, I, what I was saying is that we're the young people who are gonna appreciate a Nina Simone tribute. But these people were all 80s, 70s, and even, even older couples, beautiful couples. And I was like, no, I'm not who you came to see. You know, I'm not who you came to see. And everyone that came in, it's like, oh, I'm so glad to finally get to see you. And I say, like, oh, but I'm not her, you know? <laughs> I'm not her. So then something in me said, the next time someone says that to you, you say, thank you, I am glad to have finally made it here. So I thought maybe I, you know, the little drink I had, you know? <laughs> so then I was like, well, ain't nobody else gonna say that because people got it. So I'm sitting at a table and somebody asks, and they come over to the table, and they said, we are finally glad to get here and see you. We have been waiting so long. And I said, and I have been waiting just as long to see you. I don't know what came over me, but uh, <laughs> it just felt right. It felt like, you know, it was, it freaked me out because then after that, that's people just kept coming, you know, and, and I did it. So I went outside. I had to go outside because I was like, okay, I don't know what, what happened. <laughs> but that was like really strange. Well, long story short, before the night was over, 
the ladies we sat at the table with knew the owner. <laughs> owner comes and says, "Would you like to say she do poetry? You gonna do something tonight?" Oh, you know I can't. Let me buy another drink. And I ended up doing a thirty-minute set at the mm -hmm. Cotton Club. But prior to that, I walked around taking. I walked around taking pictures of all of these people who I admired. You know, they're on the wall and I'm going, oh my God, Rachel, oh my God, you know, oh my God, you know, and I'm getting all excited to be somewhere where I know the people, some people I admired as an artist had shared their genius. Mm -hmm. So then when the man <laughs> asked me, it all just seemed like destined or well anyway so i um i got to perform okay and then i did a piece for my dad i did that did the other piece and then they sat there so i was able to even do candy because they wanted another piece and i was like okay well that's kind of naughty but you know saying you you are y'all ready and they were like we grown so so i even got to share something kind of naughty with with my elders but it was in such a respectful manner that they got to appreciate a little part of themselves that they may not have paid much attention to in a while, and they laughed. And um, it was so beautiful. So then we get back, and I'm like, 1492. Oh, I said, oh my God, 1492, the little thing about Columbus. Yes, okay. Right. But I was like, well, 14, I came to 1492, and all I discovered was myself. Wow. Right? So I say all that to say that um, um, I, I don't tell people, like they say, I stand on the shoulders of my ancestors, and I don't because to me that means I'm putting them beneath my feet. I stand with, and I felt that then, and I feel that now, and I know with, with a lot of my with people, it, I got too concerned about what people would think about the things that I say or what people would think about the things that I share. But I'm not saying what I know, what I heard, or what someone told me. I speak from what it is I know intimately, you know? And it's such a beautiful feeling. I was just telling a girl on the way here, there's this love that you can't define. You know it is. And my problem has been trying to share in that love with others on that same level. And I don't know if I have created that problem or I'm looking at it as a problem, but I, the stories, the, the way my life walks, it allows it not to be a problem. I just don't want people to think that it's crazy. And it can be, because I call myself, the, you know, I have a psychosis is what they say, but I just say it's the psycho sis, your crazy <laughs> sister, uh, who's trying to share the beauty of being. Um, so that's, I guess that's what I wanted to share because I was oh, saying. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> I want to get candy. Can you smear me here? Privately. <laughs> oh. Okay. You asked for it. Let's hope you get Uncle Jesse. I don't know Uncle Jesse though. Okay. <laughs> it's naughty. <laughs> I did say that, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I'm looking at her like, oh my God. It's all about a night I decided to go out. So I fixed me a stiff butterscotch, <laughs> grabbed me a handful of peppermints, and my red hot ass was out the door. And I don't like to go nowhere and be no lemon head. So I said I'd find me some Mary Jane. You know, I leave me something to smoke on before I go. So I went over on Fifth Avenue and caught me a sack and I smoked it. <laughs> it was real good. It made my mouth dry. I need to, oh, I need to edit this, don't I? Do I need no, to no, edit no, no, go, go, Okay. Go ahead. Stop being nice. <laughs> so it was real good. It made my mouth dry. So I was thinking to myself, before the night's over, I'm probably going to need something to suck on. <laughs> probably find me a Jolly Rancher. <laughs> or possibly a nerd, but being a big girl, I just want to make sure his peanut wine going to be brittle. <laughs> <laughs> so I got my left feet. See, I told you. Look at you. <laughs> So I got my lefty taffy on and I made my way over to this club called Reese's. Mike and I was there. I spoke to M and M. And Lollipop was there. But she used to do so many drugs back in the day. They used to call her Blow Pop. But God, it's good. She, she looks real good. I made my way past the rapper and on over to the bar. Oh, yeah. Cracker Jack was there. And O'Henry was there. 
I got me some Hershey Kisses. But anyway, I made my way to the bar. The bar that was his sugar daddy. And he was looking at me. And I was looking at him. And I was smiling. And he was smiling. He says, girl, you have a beautiful smile. You remind me of my baby Ruth. <laughs> What's your name? I said, well, they call me Candy. So we laughed for a little while. And he let me sit down. And when he got up. I could tell he had this long boy. <laughs> I could see the mound. Mm -hmm. And I snickered a little bit, but as I was thinking to myself, it's going to be a jawbreaker, but it's certainly sure not going to be a deal breaker. And he caught me looking and he said, well, you know, you can have a piece of that now or later. <laughs> so we laughed. We talked. And later he says, you know, well, how much for a piece of candy? I want to spend a little time with you. So I said a hundred grand. <laughs> he said, girl, that ain't nothing because it's payday. <laughs> so anyway, we talked and we laughed and we went on over to his house. He lives on 5th Avenue. I was opposite the street, 5th Avenue and Park Avenue. And when we got there, we had some butternut rum, popped a few jelly beans, at least we didn't pop rocks. And he lay, sat back and he was trying to get a little more comfortable, so he took his shoes off. And let me tell you something, he had the nicest Mentos. I had never seen. <laughs> See, that's what I call him looking at my milk duds. <laughs> but in the right bra, it looked like Whoppers. <laughs> but when he put the nips in his mouth, he them like they were lemon head. No, no, like sweet tarts. I'm sorry. And that hurts just a little bit. But I didn't mind because I knew it would eventually lead to some licorice. <laughs> and it did. See, he laid me back on his bed of marshmallows. See, I'm starting to get embarrassed now. No, no. He laid me back on his bed of marshmallows and he spread my twix so he could get every bit of honey up out of it. See, because I have what I'm enjoy. There's not a sour patch nowhere in it. <laughs> and it was so good that he made me stutter. I was like, let me roll low. Let me roll low. <laughs> And just as I got ready to turn that Tootsie Roll over, something inside of me burst like a pinata. I swear there was candy all over his face. And I must have been in another orbit because when I came to, he took his butterfinger. <laughs> Goobers. <laughs> I was straight bonkers. So this Mr. Goodbar had to be from Mars because he brought that Heath. <laughs> so next it was my turn. And we did this little twizzler move. And when I slid my lips down his Chico stick and felt his fruit roll up in me, he was only a few push pops in and he was like a straight airhead. He was on some cereal shit. He was talking about pink stars, yellow hearts, and blue diamonds. And I said, oh, sugar smacks. This Kit Kat right here. <laughs> this Kit Kat had messed him up in a milky way. I mean, it's like a starburst. My body couldn't even swallow all of his whatchamacallit. Poor little sugar babies was running down my leg like Skittles. <laughs> and he was tired and he said he needed to take five. And I said, you tired? Because <laughs> I'm a hot tamale. <laughs> that was tired too. He said, yeah, but I want some more. And I said, well, you want some more? He says, yes. I said, well, if you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. So he reached in the drawer and grabbed me a ring pop, but I ate it before I came here. <laughs> but the whole moral to that story is that um, everybody wants a piece of candy, mm. even candy. Mm. So, uh, yeah, I feel a little embarrassed, but thank y'all for <laughs> giving me the opportunity to give y'all some candy. Yes, brothers and sisters, oh. we truly you know, appreciate, you know, little laughter is good, you know, always, um, you know, so, but um, as I said, you know, I mean, on this note, we really need to continue to support each other, to grow together as one people. This is how we start to build a nation. This is how we start to build community, brothers and sisters. It's vital that we do so. So may we all continue to walk in the spirit, in the true spirit of our ancestors and the true spirit of our Creator. And so we want to be thankful. We're going to keep doing this. Like I said, you know, um, it's not just today. We want to do this once a month to get together and to continue to support each other. It's vital that we do so, brothers and sisters, because if we just start and stop, then we never go anywhere. If you're going down to Miami in your car, the only time you stop is to pick up gas or to use the restroom. So let's not stop doing what we're doing. Let's not get discouraged because it's easy to get discouraged in the system that we're living in. So please let continue to support Tree Mass, continue to support all the businesses, the black owned businesses in our area. 
And I am emphasizing that because we have not been doing that, brothers and sisters. So please seek out. Help this sister with the drive that she has, please. Get with these brothers. Get information about their books, how you can get their books. And, you know, we truly, truly want to thank all of you for coming. I appreciate you. Love to all of you. And I love all of you. And I see nothing but beautiful people. Thank you. Thank you. Make sure to check out the boldest blog at landscurve.com and follow Scurve on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube under Lance Scurve.